This is Jimmy T with Sierra Wave, Laughing Pair Productions, and everything else. Today, we're honored to have Mr. Luke Snyder of 4-H Sierra Crest. Luke, welcome. Hi. Thank you for coming. You are welcome. So tell me what's going on with 4-H right now. So we're getting ready for the livestock show and auction. That's that's coming close. So what do you have in the auction? I'm showing a pig and a turkey. A pig, one turkey or how many turkeys? One turkey and one pig. How many turkeys do you have at home? Four. What are the names? So I have Jarak, Nugget, let's see, forgot the other two. Thing one and thing three. Yes. Cool. So, so you're having an auction. What's, what should someone do to watch the auction? How do we watch that? you got to head to the Tri-County Fairgrounds in Bishop. What day will that be? June 21st through June 25th. June 21 through June 25th. Do you, do you need tickets or can you just walk in? Um, I think you can just walk in. Well, that, and it, there's something secret this year. There'll be live stream. So whatever you do in the auction will be going out to the entire world. Can you handle that? Um, I can hardly handle this, so I don't know. So how did you get into 4-H? So I was just, so my mom, not my mom, sorry. So one day my teacher handed out a slip for 4-H and I was like, mm, this is pretty cool. So I asked my mom, do you do 4-H? She said, I did FFA. And I said, um, do you have anything to remember it? And she said, I have a coat. And I said, can I see it? So we went over to the closet and there it was. So I got really jealous and I wanted it. So I d joined 4-H and I was like, yeah, this is gonna be fun. My first year I raised a pig named Peggy and she was a handful. That was definitely, whew. And the second year was guilt. And then this is my first year having a different animal with another pig. Awesome. So how much work did it, when did you start with the animals to get them ready for this auction? So my first year of 4-H, I did a pig, second year pig. And then this year I did four turkeys and a pig. So when did you start getting the pig ready for this auction? About six months ago? We normally do it maybe two months before auction, March. Okay, in the spring, okay. Yes. How big is your turkey? One of them, um, Nugget, is 12 pounds, and the other's 10 and 11. So we know what you're doing right now. What are you going to do when you get slightly older? Slightly older? I'm... I'm planning to play hockey a lot, and maybe, maybe, maybe just when I get older, join FFA. And you also teach 4-H, right? I'm not sure about that one. We <laughs> did But FFA for sure. Yes. Chris, do you have any last words for the people out there besides June 21 through 26? Is that right? I hope to see you there. We hope to see you there. This is Jimmy T with Laughing Parrot, KSRW. And 4-H Sierra Crest. Hello, I'm Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. We have an exciting event coming up June 16th through the 18th. It's the Mono Basin Bird Chihuahua and Fowler Rope Bird Festival in Lee Vining. This has 90 field trips, presentations, and art displays that are going to be presented by renowned naturalists and birders. So if you want to spend some time learning about the birds around the Levining Mono Basin area, this is a great opportunity for you, June 16th through the 18th. The cost is $110 for the basic registration, $140 for the full registration. And if you want more information about the Mono Basin Bird Chihuahua and the Fowler Rope Bird Festival, go to sierraforever.org, click on Calendar, click June 16th, and I'll provide you more information and give you the ability to register for this event. I'm Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. Educate, inspire, explore.
Hello, welcome to Ion Inyo. Today we're honored to have Rock Baker, independent insurance agent, and he's discussing some stuff that's going on right now. So, Rock, what's happening in the insurance industry in California? Well, headlines have been the last couple days, well, last couple of weeks actually, where the big one came out, State Farm and made the announcement they were no longer writing new business in California. So they're they're staying on the current business that they have, but they're putting a freeze as far as writing any kind of new policies. And uh, what's kind of coming down the pike is that the news stories kind of started coming out that, oh, Allstate has also made this decision. Well, Allstate made this decision back in the fall of 21, just didn't get any press. And I think what happened was is when the when the, when the press corps started calling insurance companies, see what's going on, Allstate said, oh, yeah, we, 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 we're not doing it either back four, a few months ago. And now Farmers Insurance has made their announcement that they will no longer be writing new business as of July 1 of this year. It's all new business right now. They're staying, they are staying in California. They're staying on the policies they have, but writing new business moving forward, they're not going to be. Now this is homeowner's insurance. It's homeowner's insurance, yes. Now is that, is it primarily fire driven? It, it, it's driven, that's one component of it. Uh, it's, 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 it's driven by losses. The state has had issues with fire, obviously. Everybody, everybody's well aware of that over the past few years. Uh, Increasing rates when the company would want to maybe increase rates or whatever, they have to do the Prop 103, which passed back in the late 80s. They have to go uh, to the insurance commissioner to get approval based on the numbers. The insurance commissioner can say yay or nay to rate increases. Uh, the commissioner is very reluctant because it's a political position to grant rate increases. Uh, so the, the companies in and of themselves, just by supply and demand, can't adjust whatever rate or, rates are going on. What they'll do is with in-home insurance, they'll try to actually, I've had companies that they'll actually make a new program, re reevaluate everything, keep the old program, make a new program, you know, for new new uh, business coming in to try and get around that. And that, that, that works in that sense, but raising rates on existing programs that they have is problematic. Uh, so it's really tough. So you have that going on. The cost of everything going up, obviously building costs in California, uh, uh, other things, uh, the frequency of losses uh, has all contributed to this. And so it's just at a tipping point right now where companies, believe it or not, it's pr more profitable to them to make a decision to say, we're not doing new business right now. They actually become more profitable by putting the brakes on writing new business. And that, that has to do with the function of what they're required to do uh, in their reserves for claims, what they're required to put aside, uh, what they we talk about what's called reinsurance, which is insurance comp other big con you know international companies who will take some of the risk on what's called a book of business on these companies. The rates of that going up, the cost of doing business, the inability to really adjust quickly to market conditions with price, um, and what you have is companies, and it is it is a companies. It isn't just these three who are doing this. A lot of companies have put the brakes on writing business uh, or they'll put so many obstacles in front of their agents that their agents say, well, we're just not going to do it. And and that's there isn't a company out there right now who's jumping up and down saying, hey, we'll write new, all the new business you can give us. That, that is not out there right now. So one, two, and four, State Farm, Allstate, and Farmers, Farmers all mm -hmm. pulled writing new insurance policies yeah, they on haven't, homes. They haven't pulled out of the state. Okay, Sorry. but they're not writing new business. At, well, Farmers said in July 1, they're not writing from there. And, and conditions are such, it, it, it's, when will it end? I have no idea because there's nothing changing the business climate for insurance companies in California. So this is a business decision that they've made. And, and unless something changes, that, that is going to be the business decision going forward. How this impacts people is, well, if you buy a new home, it, it those those companies are, are just out of play right now, which, okay, it's not a big deal. I'll go to somewhere else. When companies, they're, and they're big, one, three, and five, or one, two, and five in the state, that puts pressure, the, the demand is still there, it puts pressure on the remaining companies, and it doesn't work like a retail store or a grocery store or anything like that where, oh, my competitors closed down, I can make more money. Insurance companies have what's called a capacity. These smaller companies can only do so much business based on their economics, based, again, their claims reporting, their projected claims, and their cost of reinsurance. So they will re reach what's called capacity, and they will shut down because they really 
financially can't write any more risk. And that's the product of insurance companies is writing, you know, transferring. That's the risk. Yep. And insurance companies are, are stats driven. Projected losses are based on what you're trending. Trending in California has been going up and up and up. And this is what's going. So it puts stress on the rest of the marketplace. So then as far as, again, moving forward, it's going to get less and less and less available. Um, I think it's going to have more of a cascading effect moving forward um, in the next few months. I would not be surprised to see other companies make the same decision because they will not be able to pick up the slack that these three are leaving. It just won't happen. So we'll lose the economic scale where if you get an insurance policy, it'll go up twice, 200%? Well, the, the, again, rates are real fixed and everybody's competitive with their rates. And again, the Department of Insurance improves the rates not based on demand for, okay, let's, we'll use an example, uh, we'll use cars. Okay, we went through the, the pandemic, car prices went through the roof. Why? Huge demand, low supply. Doesn't work that way with insurance. So you can have the demand because you you know, grow mainly because you have less supply, but you don't. That doesn't apply to insurance. Insurance companies have a cap on what they can do, and they don't want to. They write too much business; their losses disproportionately increase, and so they don't want to do that. Current business is more profitable claims wise than new business. And again, it's all stat driven. It's all statistical. So. As far as how does it, if I'm not buying a house, what's the big deal? Well, big deal is, is that you don't want your homeowner's insurance to lapse. Okay. Because if you're, if your insurance, like it happens, we, we, it, people lose the bill, the dog ate it, whatever's going on. Okay. And it, and the, okay, I'm just going to, I'll pay it. I'll get it reinstated. I'll, and, and companies right now, I'm not saying all companies, but uh, the companies I have right now are not in the mood to reinstate policies. Uh, I'm, I'm have a feeling. I don't know this, but I have a feeling that these three also are not in the mood to reinstate policies. That throws it into, into what's called new business. They're not writing new business. It's a different rules that apply to new business than renewals. So you got to keep that bill current. You got don't let your policy lapse. That's just that's how this impacts current people. You cannot let your policy lapse. You just can't. Does that apply to house and car? Well, this is slopping over into auto a little bit. We are seeing that the same economic factors are at work. You, auto insurance is even, I don't know, I don't know we're tight, more tightly regulated. It's more politically, it's more of a political football. There has been not, uh, as far as I know, no rate increase improved for auto insurance for anybody for like seven years now. So you're dealing with seven year old rates companies have been able to maneuver within the system to have get more premium annual mileage uh, you know good driver non good driver but there's certain things within the system they can deal with but as far as saying you know we need to increase our rates by 5% the commissioner shot up he shot it all down so 7 years without a rate increase this, we're seeing I had one this morning a policy lapsed uh, the company told me will not reinstate nor will we rewrite so and that's auto insurance so auto insurance hasn't hit the news yet, but it is it is being impacted. The same thing applies. You can't let it lapse. You just can't. So in the unlikely event I don't have enough money to pay my insurance note this year, this mm -hmm. month, can I call you and say, I'll give you some? Is there any way to... Companies aren't, again, it, it isn't... It, it's all or nothing. It, it, it pretty much, companies are not doing favors right now. They're just, okay. they're that hardcore. As far as this is what we, you know, this is what we'll do. Anything outside those parameters, no. So is there any kind of parachute that might help you a little bit? No. The, what's, it, what's that thing you call FAIR? The FAIR plan. You can, it, for home insurance, go back to home insurance. The If you have a situation where you're not able to get insurance in the private market, there's a program that California has called the FAIR plan, which stands for FAIR Access to Insurance Requirements. Uh, it is the basic policy. So when you have a mortgage, they have FAIR, they have requirements and the FAIR product it, it adheres to those uh, requirements, but the fair product does not have the same coverages level or protection level as a regular home policy does. There are ways to get to that, but the fair product in and of itself doesn't have that. Fair has had the, their rate increase because they've had a lot of pressure. They've actually increased rates. They have a different system. They don't have to go to the department for approval on certain. So they have a whole different way of how they deal with stuff. Their rates right now are extremely high. Uh, as long as there's certain the criteria is met, they do have to take you. But they, they there's issues with the roof being too old. You know, if you, if you haven't replaced your roof in like 30 years, they won't take you. 
Uh, there's a couple other things like that. They're real death on roofs right now, the FAIR program. But otherwise, yeah, they have to take you. The bait doesn't matter if there's no fire department within 30 miles. If it qualifies everywhere else, they have to take it. But you're going to pay dearly for that. We are. We did a quote for a house. This you know, places like Aspen or not Aspen Dale, uh, Starlight, and it, the Starlight has no fire protection per se. Bishop responds, but that's too far away to really give them a, any kind of cut. Um, we have a couple policies up there with current companies, but they will not write new business up there. The only option we have is the fair program and the quote for, I can't remember the specifics. It was like a $700,000 house was, was almost $9,000 in the regular market. That would be like four. So, you know, you kind of, you're, you're talking, it's an option of last resort. So you don't want to rely, oh, I'll just get a fair, it, you're going to pay dearly for it. So don't, don't let your insurance lapse. If you're looking to, to buy a house, pretty much anything in the greater Bishop area is fine. It's not an issue. Uh, there are areas, anything outside the Greater Bishop area, that, you know, and I'm not picking on these communities. Just be aware, because uh, it just depends on the on where the place is located. But Wilkerson can have some issues, Starlight can have issues, Aspendale can have issues, Shawfoot can have issues, Hamill can have issues, the Mesa can have issues. Those are places. Before you step in it, make sure that you can get coverage somewhere. You know, they're great places to live. There's a lot of beauty, great views, all that fun stuff. Make sure you can get the coverage before you really progress or make an offer on the house. So, Rock, to reiterate, the top three, two of the, three of the top four <laughs> insurance companies will not be writing home insurance anymore. New, new, new home, insurance. New insurance, right. If you have it, keep it. Mm -hmm. Don't let it lapse, whatever you do. And if you do lapse, you expect it to go up if you can get it. Yeah, you, be a new you, yeah pretty much. I mean, you do have, like, if it's just, it's just, I tell, I have people coming in shopping because their rates have gone up for home insurance because that, that is, a, they have a lot, some increases for home insurance. And I'll tell them, if you have it, keep it. Don't, you're treated differently when you go to a new company. They're going to look at certain things that your current company doesn't care about because they look at re renewal business different than new business. All companies yep. do this. So different rules apply. And so if you, if you have something right now, no one is giving this stuff away. No one is jumping up and down saying over here, over here, we'll do it. I, I tell people, if you have it, pay it and just keep what you got going on right now uh, because it's going to get worse as far as market conditions go. It's, it's, there's no reason for it to next month to have these guys come back in. It just isn't going to happen. Do you have any last thoughts, comments, remarks? Don't let your <laughs> yeah, that's just pretty much it. I mean, that's the thing is, is pretty much you know, talk to uh, talk to your agent, talk to your brokers, uh, you know, uh, as far as, you know, if there's any other issues with your insurance, make sure your policy is current. One thing people I've seen this happen a couple times as well, where people have their mortgage company pay, it will happen where that doesn't happen, that they don't pay it for this, you know, mm -hmm. this, this kind of whatever happens. And we're fighting with one right now with one of my clients trying to get this policy reinstated because the mortgagee didn't pay. The mortgagee had the money, the, just the system just didn't pay the insurance. And the company is fighting us on it, and that's kind of what we're dealing with. So make sure you you know, read your mail. Stuff comes in. The, they still use U.S. mail. I know a lot of people don't even know where the mailbox is. Read your mail. You get something, hey, we haven't received your payment find out what's going on. That's going to be the key thing because it happens. I tell people all the time, mortgagee pays, yeah, that's fine, except when they don't. And then that's a real issue. So yeah, if you get a late notice and your mortgagee is supposed to pay, find out why you got the late notice. It happens a lot where yes. you're paying one entity and they're not passing along the money they're supposed yeah, to. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's a system. There's probably, I would say two to 5% failure rate on, on mortgage pay. You know, it's significant. Wow. Yeah. And, but people just have to, I've had people, I got the bill and I, I, and it says it was late, but I, my mortgagee paid. No, 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 no. You're still responsible for it. Just that your mortgagee's paying, but you're the one responsible. And so, you know, just, you get a late notice, you don't, you know, we haven't got your payment or you get a cancel notice. You got 15 days to get money to us. Find out what's going on. Yeah. Rock, I appreciate your coming very much. Okay. It's always a pleasure. It's sometimes is more of a pleasure than others. <laughs> yeah, this is a much fun. pleasure to have you here. Yeah, not much fun. Rock, thank you very much. Thank you, Jimmy T. This is Jimmy T. with Rock Baker, independent insurance agent. If you have a policy on your house, do not let it lapse. Continue it. If you lapse it, it'll become a renewal. Sorry, a new new policy, mm -hmm. and they're going to get their profit out of you on the front end if you can get the insurance at all. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Be tremendous.